Hi everyone, Lisa Haven here, and I've got a very important report that I wanna share with you guys today, and that is this. Are the 10 stages of genocide playing out with conservatives and Christians today? And are we on a similar path as the Srebrenica genocide that happened years and years and years ago? And if we are, what stages are playing out? What stages are not playing out? And what it all means in a nutshell? Because the truth of the matter is, is um, people are being called by the Department of Homeland Security as potential terrorists uh, for things like, you know, standing against COVID-19 mandates and and, uh, forced uh, vaccinations and and all of that. And also if you believe the election uh, was stolen. And these are things that a lot of Christians and conservatives and Republicans believe, not, not, not many there on the left. And not only that, but we have Nancy Pelosi calling us domestic enemies of the state. We have leaders and politicians out there saying Republicans are terrorists. And we have the Biden administration really going after white supremacy that we really don't have a definition for other than the under the radar idea that a lot of conservatives believe, including myself, that they're really after more of the conservative nature. So we're going to ask the question because I think it's an important one to ask, especially since conservatives are being removed and blacklisted uh, from multiple platforms and even banned from a lot of things. But as you know, um, I, I want to tell you guys uh, about this right now. Uh, I filmed this uh, video just a little bit ago, but I'm at the Hear the Watchman conference, and I'm really going to be expanding on this very topic there at the conference. So I want to encourage you, get live streaming tickets to the conference. They are still available, and you can go and look at that. All you have to do is click here now, and this is the live stream, and just click buy it now. That's the button you want to click. And then the good news is, is there's actually a discount code and the discount code that you need to enter in is Haven uh, 10 and that will give you a 10% discount off of the product uh, and get it for a great price. So there it is. So if you want more information about what I'm going to talk about today, go to hearthewatchman.com and and, um, check out that live stream there for you. All right. But with that, let's get into the 10 stages of genocide that is happening or could be happening here in the United States of America. Well, here's the article that I want to use kind of as a comparison. And this is aljazeera.com. What are the 10 stages of genocide? Examining what led to the massacre of thousands of Bosniaks on the 25th anniversary uh, of the Srebrenica genocide. Now it goes on to state this, that July 11th marked the 25th anniversary of the Srebrenica genocide, the worst atrocity on European soil since the Holocaust. And a lot of the times this one is overlooked. In July 1995, Serb forces system systematically killed more than 8,000 Bosniak Muslim men and boys in the so-called United Nations protected enclave in these areas here. What led to the massacre in the 90s? American genocide scholar Gregory H. Stanton examined the stages of genocide, which eventually became his 10 stages of genocide theory. And is that theory that I want to focus on in today's report? And here it is. Stages one, two, and three, and he lumps these together as the classification that they used of the people. We already know that we have we are being classified as conservatives. Uh, we're obviously we've got the conservative title, but we've also been relisted as deplorables and Trump supporters because a lot of us are are his voters. We have symboliz- uh, symbolization and discrimination, and I feel that a lot of conservatives are currently being discriminated against. And here it is. In his famous address to a crowd in Belgrade in 1989, he presented himself as the savior of Serbdom and Europe. It enforced the notion of an us, the Serbs versus them mentality, kind of like what is going on uh, with Republicans and Democrats, conservatives and liberals today, right? Bosniaks were typically called Turks, right? And, uh, or the uh, Bosnian Muslim and branded as terrorist or branded as Islamic extremists. Well, let me show you what they're branded Republicans, conservatives and all that today. Here's a salon article. And mind you, there's more of these. Uh, Republican party is now a terrorist organization, and none of this is a surprise. Breitbart.com, MSNBC's Jason Johnson, Democrats need to say Republicans are terrorists. Breitbart actress Rosanna Arquette compares Republicans to the Taliban. She says they are terrorists who support destroying democracy. So here we have people 
literally labeling conservatives and Republicans as extremists. Well, I think that fits into the category of they labeled um, people back then, the the, um, the Bosnians, they, 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 they labeled them terrorists. Well, today they're labeling conservative terrorists. So I think there's a good tie to be or a link to be made on that one. So here's the next one, stage four, because that was three in one. Stage four here, dehumanization. And it goes on to expand on that. In order to mobilize domestic public opinion against the Muslims and to justify future acts against them in the eyes of the West, the Serbian leadership needed an image of Islam as a totalitarian, inherently violent, they called them violent, and culturally alienated system on European soil. Well, may I suggest that the same thing is happening today. They are calling a lot of conservatives violent. Needs this under the radar theme, but it is happening, dehumanization, right? Here we have ABC News, Homeland Security warns of increasing but modest threat of violence from Trump conspiracy. We have rtnews.com, MSNBC's Joy Reid riles up conservatives after she claims that the religious right, the Christians there, dream of Taliban-like theocracy. Then we also have the National Terrorism Advisory System Bulletin. This was put out back in August, and, it, and it's um, good until November 11th, I believe, was the date. But this talked about if you are against uh, some of the um, things that happen or if you have grievances over the public health health safety measures uh, and perceived government re government restrictions that could make you an actual terrorist. And it expands on that in this section. So it says, these extremists seek to exploit the emergence of COVID-19 variants by reviewing the potential reestablishment of public health restrictions across the U.S. as a rationale to conduct attacks. So in other words, if you are against the COVID-19 mandates and measures, that can make you a potential terrorist. And not just that, and that just happens to be more or less uh, the Trump, the Trump conservative uh, patriot Republican base. And not only that, but if you have perceived the election was stolen or fraud in any way, shape or form, uh, then you are also considered a potential terrorist. So there is a second check by that. We are getting discriminated against or dehumanized, if you will, and we're being told that we're being um, labeled as potential violent people. And most conservatives are not. If, if somebody is, then they're really not, um, you know, a good Christian, so to speak, but we're not violent people. And, and this is a, a, a thing that they're trying to paint out. Now we also have this, Let's go to number five here. Here we have stage five, organization. A plan to destroy Bosnia and completely exterminate its Muslim people was drawn up as early as the 1980s by general staff and the Yugoslavia People's Army, according to Vladimir uh, Shrebrov, a po politician who co-founded the party there in Bosnia. Um, how is this happening, the organization happening here in the United States of America? Well, I will say that they are um, while we're while there is no plan to um, completely exterminate a, a certain people group or anything like that, and this was so sad uh, what happened there to the Muslim people, and my heart breaks uh, for them, for the Jews, for anyone who who went through this stuff. They do not have any plans written up to exterminate yada yada conservatives here in the United States of America. So I can't say we fully fit this profile. However, what I will say is that they have already talked about compiling list for conservatives, Breitbart.com, leftists, never Trumpers, begin compiling list of Trump supporters. And it's not just list. Uh, it, it, we're also being tracked and monitored uh, and, and the whole nine yards. We're being blacklisted, removed from social media websites. And I can spend an hour showing you this stuff, uh, but a lot of that's going to be at the conference kind of expanding on that. But the bottom line is nothing's written up like it was back then. However, list and things are being compiled. Number six, polarization uh right here number six serbian and and bosnian serb media regularly broadcast polarizing propaganda to dehumanize victims and marginalize the opposition to war so the media came out and started making bold lies like um 
uh, uh, here's one example they give. Um, they fed the Serb children to the lions in the city zoo, or Muslim extremists have come up with the most horrifying way in the world of torturing people. They fed uh, children, uh, Serb children to lions in the city zoo. Obviously they didn't do that, but they had all these bold face accusations to make them look like really bad people. Well, I could say that something similar is happening here in the US, and here's what I'm talking about. Uh, we have intelligencer.com, how Trump bought, brought Nazis into the Republican politics. We also have the Philadelphia Inquirer. Is it wrong to compare Trump to Hitler? Uh, we also have here, General Mark Miley compared Trump supporters to Nazis. They are the same people we fought in World War II against. And Salon, conservatives are the new, quote, good German, Germans enabling and defending Trump's crimes. Uh, so there you have it. They're, they're making us a Ken um, to <laughs> literal Nazis and saying we have these uh, Nazi mentalities. And that's just downright terrifying. So there's that. Then we have stage seven here, and I'll get into that one. Stage seven preparation. Uh, weapons and military equipment were even flown in by military hop uh, helicopters to Serbian military officers. It's said that by the end, almost no Serbian house was without a gun. Uh, the reason or the pretext for the arms uh, delivery and the rearmament was that this was necessary for defense against the enemies of the people, the Muslim extremists there. Uh, obviously, this is not a step that's happening in the US, but I thought it important to bring up uh, because hopefully they don't start doing that in the future. And I think if they did, it would be more of a gun removal tactic versus giving out gun. Uh, stage eight, persecution. Um, and persecution happens a lot of the time. It happened there uh, in Bosnia with the Bosniaks there, the Muslims there, and um, they had literal names uh, written up on lists and, and the whole nine yards. Well, what's happening persecution wise here in the US? Well, here it is. This is a um, entire document. It's a seven page report. It was put out uh, by one of our congressional leaders. And every single one of these hyperlinks some kind of political violence that happened to either um, conservatives, uh, Republicans, Trump supporters, these kinds of things. And you can click on any one of these and it'll open the article. But it's seven pages uh, uh, of junk if you will, that, is, that has happened uh, to conservatives and Christians. And here we have threats from Democrat Congress members. We have Congress members making threats. We have attacks by left. We have threats from activists on conservatives. We have threats from Hollywood, Alec Baldwin, uh, Jim Carrey's painting. We have Madonna, Kathy Griffin holding the head uh, of Donald Trump. We have threats from the media, you know, threatening the assassination of Trump and uh, threats from educators. And then we have comparisons of Trump to Hitler. I shared some of those already. Ready. And we have uh, violent acts, threats, and advocacy of violence against Trump and his supporters. And this goes on for pages. So there's absolutely a form of persecution happening. All right. Number nine, the next step after all of that extermination. Obviously, this is not happening in uh, to conservatives here in the U.S. And finally, denial. Uh, they would be in denial about what's going on. And obviously, we have not hit that point as of yet. So there we have it. Um, lots of things to to think about, but the question really has to be asked: Is why is why are we even why are conservatives, Christians, and Trump supporters even in any of the stages? They should there shouldn't be. People shouldn't be being persecuted. People shouldn't be compiled on lists. People shouldn't be labeled as terrorists just simply for the things that they believe in, right? People have a right to believe in election fraud. People have a right to believe that the COVID-19 mandates are wrong. They shouldn't be told you don't have a right or you'll be listed as a terrorist, right? That's that's just called freedom of speech. And, and unfortunately, that's under attack unlike I have ever seen before. So on my conclusion, are we on a similar path as the Srebrenica genocide, as, as um, the, what happened to the Muslims there? And I would say not exactly, but partly. You know, some of the things are obviously happening that are going to really, that are throwing up some of my red alarms. And I think it's important to know about either way. Anyhow, I love all of you. Please don't forget to check out my partner at hidewithlisa.com. Look, if you don't have a VPN, you really want to get one because um, 
it, people are, are, are looking at your information online. You've got hack attacks, you've got uh, Google, and you've got government agencies all seeing what you look at. It's really nobody's business what you look at. And what a VPN does or Virtual Shield does is they get rid of everything within 24 hours if somebody knocks at their door. Uh, but not only that, but it acts as if you're looking on another computer so they don't have that information on you. And right now they've got a 30-day free trial. So check it out at hidewithlisa.com. Anyhow, I love all of you. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Lisa Haven, signing out.